continue the series of the driving park of Port Huron. And I told you there were three events I thought were pretty significant for this park. We've already looked at the first one, and uh, we'd like to look at the second uh, one today and possibly even the third one if we have time. If you haven't already looked at the previous video, number 202, I would suggest you look at that video before you watch this video because it gives you a lot of background about this video. The previous video looked at these two men here, Barney Oldfield and Lincoln Beachy. Barney Oldfield was a premier race car driver of his era, and Lincoln Beachy was probably the most famous aviator of his time as well, an aviator that could only do the stunts that no one else could do. Oldfield and Beachy shared something else besides a need for speed. They shared a publicity agent. The agent hatched an ingenious plan that would put Beachy and Oldfield firmly in the public eye and force people to pay if they wanted to see the action. Eye-catching posters were printed in which the demon of the sky was shown pitted against a daredevil of the ground. All over the country on courses surrounded by a high fence to ensure there were no freebies, Beachy and Oldfield race for the championship of the universe. Beachy flying a new plane he had designed and built himself, called the Little Looper, which had Beachy painted in three-foot letters on his upper wing, against Oldfield's famous red 100-horsepower Fiat. Crowds flocked to see the spectacle, thousands and thousands. They played in only the biggest cities, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. People were just thrilled as the two vehicles throttle open wide, unmuffled engines roaring, sped past the grandstand, with clouds of dust bellowing from the wheels of the big car. Although Beachy's plane was faster, the whole affair was staged so that the stars of the show knew exactly who would win each time. After the pair crossed the finishing line, always nearly neck and neck, Beachy would soar up into the sky and put on a breathtaking aerobatic display, adding more and more loops as time went on in order to keep ahead of the record set by other stunt pilots. Eventually, he was doing as many as 80 loops, one right after the other. In 1914, 17 million Americans turned out in that frenetic seven-month period to watch a little looper put through his paces, and everywhere he went, the Alexander of the Air, as the press hailed him, was given superstar treatment. I mentioned that the Oldfield Beachy combination only played in the large cities. So you can imagine the surprise of the Port Huron citizens when they found out that Barney Oldfield and Lincoln Beachy was coming to our city. This article appeared in the Port Huron paper July 28, 1914. And it says Port Huron is the only city of its size in the United States which will be played by the Lincoln Beachy Barney Oldfield combination this season. They appear at the driving park Wednesday afternoon, August 5th. And it goes on to describe some of the cities that they'll play uh, after Port Huron. And then after that, they were going to go on a world tour, which would include New Zealand, India, Germany, France, and the British Isles bringing them back to New York early in May of 1915. Beachy and Oldfield would then be a special eight-week feature of the San Francisco 1915 Exposition and their marvelous Earth and Air Championship events. It goes on to say that judging from the amount of talk which their proposed local appearance has caused, the Port Huron meet should be a huge success. There will probably be more automobiles in Port Huron August 5th that have been seen in the city on one day before. Advices have been received from scores of town that practically everyone who drives or owns a car will make Port Huron his mecca on that date. As the popularity of Barney Oldfield, coupled with the worldwide reputation of Beachy, will prove too strong a magnet to be resisted. Beachy says race against automobile is more dangerous than his loop act. The spectacular career of Lincoln Beachy, the world's greatest airman, is not brought to a sudden and spectacular termination 
before he gets here, he will be seen at the Port Huron Driving Park in aerial feats that will be spectacular and thrilling in the extreme. One of the most hazardous feats he will introduce will be the airship and automobile race in which the airship flies almost as close to the ground as it is possible for it to do without touching the motor car as it passes over it. Beachy says his race against a high-speed automobile is more dangerous than his loop-to-loop -loop and upside-down flying. There is nothing that can happen when I am high in the air that I cannot handle. But when I am going at a speed of 80 miles an hour, just a few feet above the ground, the slightest accident to any part of the machinery or the stopping of the motor for even an instant would send me crashing to the ground at frightful speed before I could even think of what was happening. Beachy to go limit of his skill at park says ambition to be world's most daring aviator compels him to do things. At no time feels nervous. Sincere hope is that if anything goes wrong, Van will play quick step. It goes on in this article to say, I am not egotistical enough to suppose for a moment that the people come to witness my flying with a view of appreciating any artistic fineness I am credited with imparting to my handling of the aeroplane. Only one thing draws them, and that is a morbid desire to witness something happen. They all predict that Beachy will be killed in a fall from the sky, and none wants to miss being at the finish. The biggest crowd ever assembled would be drawn if the promoter would advertise that, on a certain day, Lincoln Beachy would fall from the air and be killed. No enclosure would hold the multitude. Perhaps few would admit that such a desire or thought sends them to the park to see me go to the heavens. But I know just what the magnet is. On the other side of the coin, Barney Oldfield expects to make new record here. Auto Speed King thinks he can clip two seconds from his dirt track mark. Appears with Beachy. Most attractive racing card in the nation to be put on here, Wednesday, August the 5th. Barney Oldfield is so confident of setting a new mark for the driving park track. When he comes to this city in conjunction with Lincoln Beachy on Wednesday, August 5th, that he is wired here to engage not less than 15 timers to clock him when he goes after his old mark of 53 seconds on a half-mile dirt track. Oldfield will drive his 100-horsepower Fiat Cyclone, which you see him standing in front of in this photograph here. And over to the left is Lincoln Beachy. Barney Goldfield brought two cars to Port Huron for his exhibition. You've already seen the first car. This is the second car. This was called the Christie Monster. It was named after its builder, Walter Christie, and its claim to fame was being the first front-wheel drive race car. And it had 300 horsepower compared to the other car, which only had 100 horsepower. You can see here that he's now advertising for Henry Ford's friend, Harvey Firestone. It says on the side of his car, My only life insurance, Firestone Tires. Which warms my heart since I worked for them for about 35 years. Beachy arrived in Port Huron before Oldfield did, and really he put on his own exhibition. In this article here, uh, during an interview with a Times Herald reporter, he says, Beachy doesn't think 1914 will see ocean flight. He is confident, however, of the ultimate success of the undertaking. He's guest at the Harrington Hotel. Fearless Airman will compete with Speedy Haver's racing car on Wednesday. Haver's at that time was being built in Port Huron and actually wasn't too far from the uh, racetrack. Uh, it was uh, located on Elmwood there right uh, near Pine Grove. Later it would be an EMF factory and Studebaker factory as well. What I thought was interesting in this article is uh, he makes a prediction. I'll read a little bit of this for you. Lincoln Beatty, the airman who occupies a class by himself in public regard, arrived in Port Huron last evening and is a guest at the Harrington. When interviewed by the Times Herald, Beatty talked entertainingly on current topics. He is a youthful appearing fellow and looks more like a college chap on his vacation than the man over which the scientific world is raving. 
His transgression of the laws of gravity seemed to worry the scientists more than it does Beachy. He declares that his feats performed in different parts of the country this summer will advance aviation by 10 years and will make possible the construction of the foolproof aeroplane. Now here's a prediction I was uh, mentioning. Within 10 years, there will be few automobiles except for trucking purposes. They will all be flying and will be far safer than any earth or water transportation they now have, declared Peachy. After the people here witnessed by looping and upside down flying on Wednesday, they will be willing to admit that nothing is impossible of performance with the aeroplane in the hands of a skilled pilot. I am not reckless, and I feel insulted when I am called a daredevil. I perform my tricks simply because I am gifted with a touch in combined thought and action. I think that prediction may have been a little off. Oakfield and Beachy stayed at the Harrington Hotel while they were here. Beachy had a room on the third floor, but he never took the elevator. He always walked up the stairs to get to his room. The reason being is that elevators were dangerous. The reason we know that is this article appeared in the Times Sarah, July 2nd, 1914. And it says this, the little story that is to follow is not a press agent yarn. It really happened. Beachy was at a local hotel at the time the elevator took a short drop. He was being shaved the next morning, and the incident was called to his attention by the barber. This is what he said in a minute. People do not realize the chances they are taking by riding in elevators. They are liable to be hurt at any time. As for me, I never ride in an elevator. It is too dangerous. I came near being hurt in an elevator at Montreal. And from now on, Beachy takes the stairs. During his stay in this city, he never used the elevator, but walked up the stairs to his room on the third floor. And this from a man who flirts with death amid the clouds and chases the raindrops through the sky with the agility of a bird on the wing. July 27, 1914. Beachy to thrill with triple loop, he gives promise says he will attempt new sensation at meet here with Barney Oldfield at the driving park Wednesday, August 5th. Barney Oldfield and Lincoln Beachy averaged about $4,000 on every uh, one of these events that they did. And today that's like over $100,000. So they weren't hurting for money. Prior to August 5th, 1914, this appeared in the Times Herald. Famous King of Airmen will execute his loop-to-loop -loop and other death-defying acts at the driving park. And it goes on to explain the illustration here, showing Beachy upside down in the air at dizzy altitude. Insert shows him racing high-powered automobile. August 4th, the day before the event, this appeared in the Times Herald. Port Huron Driving Park, Wednesday, August 5th. Beachy and racing Oldfield, world's greatest automobile daredevil. Rain, shine, or cyclone. Looping between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Looping loop. Then they have a little blurb here that's upside down that says, Flying upside down. Positively farewell appearance at Beachy and Oldfield in the state of Michigan prior to the tour of the world. No gate charge for motor cars. Admission 50 cents, grandstand 25 cents. This article also appeared in the paper that day. Loosen pin and rudder imperils life of Beachy. Appears here tomorrow with Barney Oldfield. Aviator flirts with death when the steering apparatus fails to respond. Oldfield lowers track record held by Lewis Dispro. I have to wonder how much of that is hype just to get more people up but he landed safely. This is a great photograph of uh, Barney Oldfield striking a pose when he was arriving at the driving park in Port Huron. These next couple photos I want to show you were actually published in the newspaper uh, years after the event, but the pictures were taken during the event. And the caption on this first one reads, Barney Oldfield stirred the dust on the old Port Huron driving track. The track was a favorite spot here in the days of yesteryear. 
It was a fairground site as well and used primarily for horse racing. It was located some distance west of where the American approach to the Blue Water Bridge joins Pine Grove Avenue. The track subsequently was abandoned. And in this photo here, the caption reads, A flying machine makes a perfect landing on the old driving track at the fairgrounds back in the days when Granddad was a young man. Lincoln Beachy, the pilot in this airplane, set out in the open, right behind the propeller. Actually, he sat in front of the propeller. Crowds lined the rail to see the spectacle, which was a rare sight in those days. I imagine that August the 5th, 1914 was a very memorable date for so many people in the city of Port Huron. Wouldn't you like to go back and be able to see what they saw? Well, perhaps we can. I found this old film of a Barney Oldfield Lincoln Beachy race. I thought you might enjoy seeing it. This is Lionel Beachy getting ready to take off. And there he goes. And here comes Barney, making the first turn, all by himself. And here he comes on the second turn, but this time he's got company. There's Beachy, right beside him, and now ahead of him. Now Beachy's all by himself. Where's Barney? Oh, there he comes. And finally, a landing. A little rough, but he made it. Well, I wish I could have been there. Well, we've looked at two of the major events uh, out of the three that I told you that I wanted to share with you. We'll look at the third one in our next video. So join me then.